Glory to God. Y'all come on in. Look, we have a part one and a part two. So we've already did our announcements in the first video. We have already did our prayer in the first video. So if you are just now tuning in to this current video, make sure that you click on our first video so that you can get that prayer the prayer was so good it had just ended so in our first video we do have our announcements that we want you to keep up with i will put the link to that video on top of this one so you can get the part one as well as the part two and we just want to say glory to god god we say glory to god glory to god Glory to God forever. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God forever. We lift your name up. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, I'm going to give y'all time to invite some people in. Come on, sing worship with me. We've already did prayer. Amen. We've already did prayer. We've already did announcements. Going to give y'all some time to invite some people in with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God forever. We lift your name up. Glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God forever. We lift your name up, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Hallelujah, salvation and glory honor and power unto the lord thy god for the lord thy god is mighty yes the lord thy god is omnipotent the lord thy god he is wonderful so not just some praises y'all but all praises be to the king of king for the lord our god he is wonderful and all praises be to the king of kings for the lord our god he is wonderful he is wonderful. He's so wonderful. Hallelujah, y'all. I love that song because it says, Glory to the King of Kings. He's the King of Kings. So, y'all, you know how they might have an authority that was over a region. Well, I want you to know that God is the king over that authority. You understand? So he is the king of kings. He is Lord over the United States of America. He is Lord over China. He is Lord over India. He is Lord over every dark kingdom because he is king of kings. He is wonderful. And it just goes to show you that God is a sovereign God. God is so sovereign. They have people that think that they can sit in the seat of God. You can't sit in the seat of God if you did not create heaven and earth, which is the seat that God sits on in the heavenlies. God's throne is in heaven. He is seated on his throne in the earth. Is his footstool. So if the earth is his 
footstool, then that means that the greatest part of where we live at in our environment is beneath him. The greatest house is beneath God. The greatest car is beneath God. The biggest ministry is beneath God. The greatest hit gospel song is still beneath him because his throne is in heaven and his feet is on the earth. And so you're not so big to where God can bring you low by the stomping of his toe. You're not so high where God can't bring you low by the stomping of his feet because the earth is his footstool. He puts his, he puts his, he rests his foot on this place. So the place that you idolize, come on somebody, the place that you worship your house, you worship your car, God say that's just good enough for him to sit his foot there. That's just great enough for him to put his foot on top of your house, to put his foot on top of your car, to put his foot on top of your ministry, to put his foot on top of your way with children, to place his foot on top of your church. He can put his foot on top of your ministry. He can put his foot on top of your business. And then we have, they have kingdoms that have been set up or nations that have been set up thinking that they are above the authority of God. And of course, God gave me a poem in poems of a broken soul made whole. And that poem just said, how can you be greater than the very one you came from? Now, of course, in the poem, I was discussing women, how women have given birth to all humanity and we know that human you know is ain't all of it human okay you understand some of these people got wizard spirits some of these people got familiar spirits honey them people it's not humans those people is demons okay but to the women who have birthed out humanity the poem said how can you be greater than the very one that birthed you how can you be greater than the very one you came from here it is a woman birthed you. A woman brought your stupid self here. A woman brought your silly self here. A woman brought your arrogant self here. A woman taught you how to brush your teeth. A woman potty trained you. A woman changed your diaper. And now all of a sudden, you didn't let side pieces buck you up to where you're better than women. All of a sudden, you all look down on a, the identity of a woman. A woman. All of a sudden you're judging a woman all of a sudden a woman is not good enough all of a sudden a woman has to be harassed and compared to the devil is a lie it ain't the woman honey it's something going on with you trying to be a woman come on now how can you be if somebody had to laugh because i had to laugh too y'all better laugh it up y'all better say something you may not be bold enough to say it how rogo say it but you can put something on that screen you ain't better than no woman when you came out of a woman you might want to be a woman but you ain't better than one and so here it is we have to learn how to humble ourselves we have people that don't want to reach down and help women we have people that don't want to connect with women because they think that they're so high or so mighty or so above but the whole truth of the matter is that they're wrestling in the inside with identity issues and we bind that up off of you in the name of Jesus whatever you have done in the night it is beginning to show up in the light and so we purify you with the absolute blood of Jesus that you would take your rightful role as a man and not compare yourself to women but humble yourselves before the authority of women seeing that God entrusted women to birth you that if it was not for a woman you would not have been here if it was not for a woman you would not have been here to be able to have rightful legal access into this earth realm so why is it that children are now disrespecting women why is it that men are now disrespecting disrespecting women. Children are disrespecting women because they suffer with identity issues at an early age. And men are suffering with how coming against women is because they have taken a part of something that they had no business taking a part of. And so we curse that, those demons up out of you so where you can learn to reverence women. You can learn to respect a woman. You can learn to honor women because at the end of the day, if you dishonor women, that's not a reflection of her. 
That's not a reflection of her hair. That's not a reflection of her edges. Come on, dummies. That's not a reflection of her makeup. That's not a reflection of her wardrobe. If you dishonor women, that's a reflection of you. If you are a woman and you're a dishonoring other women, that's because you do not embrace your own womanhood. If you are a woman and you are dishonoring other women, it's because you are not comfortable with your womanness. You are intimidated by her womanhood. So if you are a woman dishonoring another woman, it's because she's wearing her womanhood so good, it's making you second guess your own. So we bind that demon up out of you women who dishonor other women. Become a real woman so that you don't have to be intimidated by another woman. So that you can support a woman in a respectful manner. So where you can learn from a woman in a respectful manner. You don't have to come against her. You don't have to pull her down. But it's because you got some butch going on within the inside of you. You've been having some fantasy thoughts that your husband don't know nothing about. And you need to get it together. And we invite you to eclectic counseling services. Because we are going to be going nationwide. And my God, we definitely see the need. And so here it is. We have women dishonoring other women. Because they buy, they, they got some stuff going on. They they manly in the inside. They're not comfortable with their womanhood. They got issues going on. Then we have men. The audacity of men. Understanding that you came out of a birth canal of a woman. Understanding that it you only have legal access in this earth. Because of woman. But now we have men disrespecting women. Because they want eyelashes. They want makeup done. They want fur minks and different things like that. And blonde weed. But you can't have that. Because you are a man. So your role as a man is to cover a woman. Your role as a man is to protect a woman. Your role for a man is not to compete with a woman. Your role for the man is to stand beside that woman and cover her. And that's in other ministries that I'm looking at. Not necessarily in ministries that I'm connected with. Because see, rope, the rope can't fly like that. But we got other ministries that are competing with, with female ministries. And they big old bishops and big old, you know, looking men and, you know, with animal spirits and different things like that. You get them, get them demons out so that you can be a real man and learn how to cover women and respect women and then not be intimidated by women at the same time and not feel like every woman have to bow down to you because not every woman is a side piece like your wife. Some women are real women. Some women go to school. Some women have their own companies. Y'all ain't saying nothing because God is good like that. Some women have their own. They don't need your own. So you can't treat a queen like your side piece wife. Come on. You can't get mad because everybody ain't like her. You gotta get into it. You gotta work because your appetite was a mess and now you have to live with that trash. Still respect these queens that's coming up. And understand that that's your role of a man. And if you're not able to do that, that's not saying anything about her lashes. That's not saying anything about her makeup. That's not saying anything about her extensions. That's saying something with you that you have taken on a role within your manhood and have emerged it somewhere with, with woman identity. And that's a, that's a bad thing for you and your family and your bloodline, especially, okay, with those animal demons and all of that. So we purge you with the absolute blood of Jesus. Jesus. And of course, we thank God that, you know, what man won't do, God will come through and do. And so we thank God for women today who is creating their own way. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. We thank God. Come on, sir. You better laugh. You better look. Don't laugh too hard at them now. I done already to call them monkeys and animals. Now, don't y'all do them too wrong that I put some prayers up. Y'all gonna put some prayers and put, put some love. Show them. I done already read them. They Miranda rights. I know it's funny, but I didn't read them them all they rights and they put the eyelashes in there too so now you know y'all show them some love because I done already went in on some of these ape looking men that want to be women and I had to say that y'all because some for every person that is greatness is assigned to the life of that person if you have a purpose or if there's greatness that is assigned to you just like you are assigned to tear the, down the kingdom of darkness the devil will have somebody assigned to you 
you to try to tear you down. So you are assigned to tear them down. They are assigned to tear you down. So that's so it's like, well, oh my gosh, is this something new? Is this just happening? No, this is not. This has been going on a very long, long time. We understand that when Eve was in the garden, Eve was understanding that she had the role that she would birth something out of her canal that would crush the head of the snake. And so the snake having an inquivity that she would birth something to crush his head, that snake met her to come against that assignment. And so if you are a beautiful woman, then there might be a fag man that might try to come against your assignment. You know, if you are a handsome man, there might be a man looking witch that might try to come against your assignment. And so it's not so much of, you know, you did a scandal or you did, it's not that you did something wrong. You're doing something right. And the issue is that we have people that nobody is assigned to them. Nobody is attacking your ministry. Nobody is saying nothing about your house or your family or your house or your car or your ministry. The reason why they're not attacking you is because you ain't doing nothing. And so these are the people that we have that all that have something to say. These are people that just came out of a shoe. They they have not held a conference. They 60 years old. They have not opened the church. They walking in disobedience. They um then got sidetracked with a side piece and, and then birthed a family with the side piece. They they all well, look, I will say, look, y'all look let me tell y'all, y'all wanna put y'all spot, y'all face up. I gotta say, I have to say what it is, y'all. I, we do have to be honest, y'all. We cannot lie, but we do have to be honest. We have to be honest. And so that's true. We got these men that they then fell in love with a side piece and their whole life is off track. So their ministry is watered down. There's no meat in their ministry. There's no message in their ministry. Because how are you going to talk to somebody about um, life and your life is derailed with a side piece? How, what can you tell us about a business when the side piece don't work so y'all can't own no business? Come on, somebody. Y'all can't own no company because guess what? You're not with a helpmate. So how you going, so now you, so your ministry whack. Because now you got to look at somebody else's ministry that is with a helpmate. You got to look at somebody else's ministry that is with the right person and partnering with the right people because they're actually taking territory as we're going to see today. This is going to be a very long video, y'all. We have about two messages. This is just the introduction. This is just the introduction. I thank God because we did get the prayer done in the first video. Come on. We did also get our announcements done in the first video so this video here where this video is not coming to play this video is coming to get it straight okay so we did do our prayer pr prior we did do our announcements prior now we're into the steak okay we're into the steak and the potatoes and so what we have is we have false ministries going on because people got with people out of their lust People got with people. That woman knows she was a side piece. She knows she was a thought. So, but she went and seduced the pastor, or she went and seduced a business owner. So she went and seduced a lawyer. She went and she seduced a doctor. And so now you have that these pastors, they don't have a real sermon to give because their life have been off track ever since they got seduced. Come on now, you're not gonna sit up here and play with robotica because at the end of the day, we understand that when Eve let the snake seduce her, she got off track. She ended up, instead of birthing something that crushed Satan's head, which she eventually did, she first birthed something that was from Satan. How do I know that her life got off track? Eve was supposed to birth something to crush the serpent's head. And so just like she was a powerful, mighty woman of God on an assignment, that snake was on an assignment against her. So some of y'all don't have nobody assigned to y'all 
all because you ain't nobody in the realm of the spirit. You don't carry no weight. You're already off your assignment. God, God can't give you another assignment until you go back and get rid of that thug that you got. Till you go back and get rid of that thought that you laid up with. You want God to bless the ministry, but you've been disobedient for the past 25 years raising bastard children with a person that God never assigned to you. And so now you still trying to do ministry because you need your bills paid. But guess what? The ministry is fake. How do I know the ministry is fake? Because you don't have no substance in your own home. All right. Now, hey, hey, hey. We in now. We in here today. You don't have no substance in your own home. You got to go outside of the house to find something to preach about. You got to go outside of your life to find some a book to write about. You got to go outside of your ministry to find something to sing about. Why you can't sing about Roddy? Because you know why? Because God didn't tell you to be with all with Roddy. Why you can't write a book about your kids? You know why? Because them kids is this able. Why are they disabled? Because that's not the DNA that God assigned in the family that God attached to you. But you let your perversion lead you. You let your perversion walk you down the aisle. Now you connected with somebody that is dead weight. And so because they are dead weight, your ministry off track. You can't write a book about them. Come on now. You can't write no book about them. Because what you gonna write about? What y'all been doing? Don't That ain't no book in the ministry. Okay, you with the wrong person. Okay, if you can't write a book about y'all life, if you can't sing a song about y'all life, if you can't preach no message is coming from out of your own house, you got to go to somebody else's house to get a message. Come on now, you can't write no post about your life. Come on, baby, that's because you didn't messed up somewhere a long time ago. And guess what? Why would God give you some more instructions when you have not followed the first instruction? The first instruction was to leave the trash. Y'all ain't saying nothing so that you can get a helpmate, so you can have a, a ministry to birth out. And shut up, I call y'all. So you can have a ministry to birth out, so you can have a business to produce so that you can have a book to write so you can have a seat it should not be where you gotta go look at somebody house somebody else house to birth out ministry if you're not birthing out real life ministry in your own home it's because you're disobedient so let me tell you something get let me let me let me want me to help you let me help you get rid of that thought get rid of that if you get rid of her, you can get you a real ministry. If you get rid of her, you can get you a, a sing you a good song. If you get rid of Rahab, honey, you can write you a good book. I mean, this is a good book right here. If you get rid of Rahab and get rid of Roddy, the only thing Roddy doing is tearing you out. Roddy ain't thinking about marrying you. That's the only thing Roddy is thinking about doing. And let me help you, honey. When that's over with, he's still going to be sick, nasty, crazy, and perverted. So the only thing he's doing is rottening your purpose. The only thing he's doing is rottening out your destiny. And so because he broken, since he doing that to you, knocking you down or whatever, got you mentally ill, now you got to try to assume somebody else's identity. Because you did not take time out to produce your own identity. You did not take time out to wait on God. You did not take time out to covenant with the right partner of God. If you covenant with the right partner, you can use your own identity. You can use your own life experiences. You can discuss your own, the progress of your own family. You can birth your own ministry. You shouldn't have to wait for somebody else's life in order for you to preach a sermon. You should not have to wait for somebody else's life in order for you to write a book. You should not have to wait for somebody else's life in order for you to produce a movie but let me tell you why let me tell you why let me tell you why the reason why you gotta wait on somebody else's life for you to produce a movie let me tell you why let me tell you why let me tell you why the reason why you gotta wait for somebody else's life to produce a movie 
You know why Sam? Let me tell you why Sam. Because you know what? It don't sell for Sam to write a movie about Larry. Come on, somebody. Come on, clap, 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 clap. That's it, that's it. It, it don't sell for you to, for Sam and Larry to sing a song together. Come on now. It don't sound right. The song just don't come out right when it's Sam and Larry. Come on now. It don't sound right when it's, when it's, when it's Jake's and Jerry. It don't preach good. Come on now. Jake's and Jerry. We know you with Jerry, but Jake's and Jerry, it, 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 it ain't no good Sunday message. Come on now. And it don't sound good to the ears of the people. And so that's why if they're not good enough for you to preach about them on Sunday, if it's not good enough for you to sing about it in your music on Monday, if it's not good enough for you to write about the book on Thursday, then it should not be good enough for you to be dealing with Friday night. You shouldn't be with nobody at night that you can't preach about in the morning. You shouldn't be with nobody at night night that you can't sing about in the studio you shouldn't be when and, and this is the thing now because we got to get with this we got to get with this demon too because everybody feel like it's about somebody everybody feel like you know well you singing about this person or you preaching about this person or you come on come on now come on that's right that's, that's get that no come on get give them the smile give them the smile that's right that's right that's right you singing about this person or you smiling about this person you looking at this person let me tell you what it is honey it's called you being in right alignment with the will of god for your life okay I know people that I have worked with. And see, that's the thing. We all caught up in a relationship. You know, who you're dating or who you're with. We all caught up in that, okay? But let me tell you something. God can send you to a job. Y'all don't understand. And see, this is where so many people have gotten doors closed in their face because they're looking at somebody else's life. God may use somebody else's life in or may use somebody else's relationship in their life to strengthen their faith. He may use that relationship to test their faith. He may use that relationship to take their faith from faith to faith and from glory to glory. He may use that relationship to birth out books from a hard place. Y'all ain't saying nothing because when Abraham and Sarah connected, we're going to find out that it was not just peaches and creams and strawberry and roses, but they had to go through the process of the promise. So he may partner you with somebody that can help you go through your process of music. They can help you go through your process process of writing a book. They can help you go through your process of writing that gospel song. They are partnering with you through the process of your promise and they can also be your life partner as well. But that does not mean God and see oh my God, hallelujah. Because see that's where we messed up at. We went with somebody that was easy. Oh, Lord. God. Come on now, God. We went. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. You didn't want to wait for Veronica because Veronica had standards. Veronica was going to push you into purpose. Veronica was going to push you into destiny. Veronica was going to challenge you in the area that you were weak. Veronica was going to be a vessel by God to call you out when you were wrong. Veronica was going to be the person to tell you to fix your face, dry your tears, and keep going. But you didn't get with Veronica. You got with Lucy Luke. Oh, yeah, that's it. So Lucy Lou don't know how to tell you to fix your face. Lucy Lou don't have the confidence to correct you. Lucy Lou don't have a purpose of her own so she don't know how to teach you how to get the destiny. So you got with Lucy Lou and now your life been loose ever since. Okay? Y'all ain't saying nothing. I, is it silence? Cut, cut the music off. Cut the music off. Cut it off. Cut it off. Silence. Get you some silence so that right there can settle in. If you get if you get rid of Lucy Lou, 
your life, you can stop envying other people who let they Lucy Lou go. Come on now. Because guess what? All of us could have been with a Lucy Lou because they're everywhere. Lucy, loose is, Lucy Lou is loose for everybody. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Lucy Lou is loose not just for you, but for everybody. But you can't get mad with the people that let Lucy Lou go because they had enough self-confidence. They had enough faith in God that Lucy Lou didn't know where she was going. Lucy Lou was not a helpmate to her own self. Lucy Lou didn't know which route to take for her own purpose and destiny. So how can Lucy Lou help you? So you can't get mad with people that let Lucy Lou go and now they're going forth in purpose. Now they're going forth in destiny. You can't get mad with those people who took the road less traveled by and now they have a legitimate ministry or now they have a legitimate thing that God God is doing in their life or now they're being pushed in the right direction so you have to understand this when you disobey God hey, shut up oh my god it's like we already I'm supposed to be preaching this y'all we got to we have to preach this today because we have two bible studies we have two bible studies in this one video two bible studies in this one video so I'm already in the message we have it is that Lot went to Sodom and Gomorrah. And when Lot went to Sodom and Gomorrah, his wife did not want to let that place go. And because she kept looking back, oh my God, because she didn't want to let go of whatever demonic partnerships or whatever environmental waste, toxic waste, that was in that area because she was connected to that toxic smell and connected to that toxic waste. She had lost her class if she ever had any. She had lost her dignity if she ever had any. She had lost her sense of purpose and direction if she ever had any. And so because she was not able to let it go, she ended up turning into a statue. She ended up staying there. She ended up turning into a, a pillar of salt. And so if you don't want to let go of toxic waste, shut up or call your thought Make sure you share. Make sure you tag. Make sure you invite and like. We all the way up in here today. We have not gotten to the lesson, but we are getting pieces of it, which is going to hopefully shorten the time for us. So if you don't want to let go of the toxicity, if you don't want to let go of Lucy Lou that everybody didn't been loose with Lucy Lou. If you don't want to let go of the toxic waste, then what will happen is you'll get mad with people that still keep moving forward. You'll get mad with people that passed that stage eight years ago. You'll get mad with people who have enough confidence not to be with a Lucy Lou. You'll get jealous of the people who have enough a confidence and security within themselves not to walk with a Lucy Lou. And you start saying, well, who they think they is? They ain't nobody other than somebody that don't want the Lucy Lou that you still connected to. They must be somewhere better than you if they had enough sense to let go of Lucy Lou. Five years ago. So we, so that's where the jealousy come in. So, you know, who she thinks she is that she ain't with a Lucy Lou or he ain't with a Lucy Lou. With. So I'm going to tear down his queen and put try to put them on the same level. You can't tear down a queen low enough to be next to your crazy wife. You can't tear down a queen next enough to know enough to be next to your Lucy Lou, Sodom and Gomorrah daughters. You can't tear down nobody else's life for low enough next to be to your next to next to low enough to be next to your Sodom and Gomorrah toxicity. You can't tear down somebody else's life low enough next to be next to be to your trash dump living. And you wouldn't have to tear nobody down if you would let go of Lucy Lou. You wouldn't have 
to tear, let nobody, you wouldn't have to tear nobody else down or take nobody else's identity if Jerry stopped backing you down. If you got rid of Jerry that was backing you down, that ain't no good for you. Come on now. If you got rid, don't put the hearts up. I might be talking about you. Come on now. Come on. If you got rid of Jerry, then honey, you wouldn't be jealous of no queen, sis, who know that Jerry ain't no good. Come on, somebody. If you got rid of Jerry that was backing you down, you can find your own identity. If you got rid of Jerry that was backing you down and using you for money, half of them prostituting you, then if you got rid of Jerry, then guess what? You would be able to open up a business and be in your right mind. If you got rid of Jerry that was a that was a sign to your life to destroy your purpose, to destroy your identity, to tear down your destiny, that's what Jerry is there to do. And so if you got rid of Jerry that was backing you down, honey, you wouldn't have to be jealous of no queen. You wouldn't have to be jealous of somebody that know they worth. You wouldn't have to be jealous of nobody that was walking in their true identity because guess what? Ain't no Jerry going to tear nothing. Ain't, ain't, it's not welcome in this environment. Okay, so you get you an environment where you can thrive in, sis. And guess what? Jerry docking you down. You know, we can tell that's what's going on because guess what? You mad at these queens out here. Because you know why? Because Jerry let you know you ain't no queen. Jerry knock you down. Guess what? To let you know you is a thought and that's what you is. And so when you get done with that situation, you jealous of these queens that know not to live in Sodom and Gomorrah. You jealous of these queens that, 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 that ain't got nothing to do with no Jerry 10, 15 years ago. You mad at these queens that's walking in their purpose, but you know who you should be mad at, sis? Be mad at Jerry, girl, that's making you feel like a whore. Be mad at Jerry that's not knocking you down. Be mad at Jerry that's making a fool out of you. Be mad at Jerry that's prostituting you. Be mad at Jerry that's using you. Be mad at Jerry that's stealing your self-worth. Be mad at Jerry that then stole your self-confidence. Be mad at Jerry that then took your womanhood. Be mad at Jerry that then took your femininity. That's who you need to go home and fight with. Stop fighting with these people that then left Sodom and Gomorrah and never lived there. Stop fighting with these people, honey, that's walking in their purpose and walking in alignment with the will and destiny of God for their life. And I said that to say this. Thank you, Holy Ghost, because guess what? The Holy Spirit be right there with me, okay? All things through and by Him. I said that to say this. The reason why I said that is because when Lot wife kept looking back, she turned into a pillar of salt. So here it is. Nobody told her to keep looking back. Nobody told her to go live in Sodom and Gomorrah trash dump. Nobody told you to go pack your clothes up and go live in Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah, y'all know what that is, okay? Come on now, come on, come on, put the hearts up. Y'all know what it is. Put it up, put it up, put it up. So that's right, put it up. Y'all know what it is. Now, come on now, come on, because we're going to be real. We, it's nothing wrong with getting your hair done. It's nothing wrong with getting your makeup done. But you can't get on here and be fake. Okay, you got to be real. So this girl went, packed up her clothes and lived in Sodom and Gomorrah and started making a living out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Got a job in Sodom and Gomorrah. Bought a house in Sodom and Gomorrah. Pulled up her car in Sodom and Gomorrah. Birthed Sodom and Gomorrah monkey kids in Sodom and Gomorrah. Took the kids to school in Sodom and Gomorrah. Didn't nobody tell you to go move to Sodom and Gomorrah. So here it is. Lot and his wife went and moved into a trash dump. Head shot up by Kaya. Lot and his wife went and birthed kids in a trash dump. Come on now. You know what smelling like one as well. Slot and his wife went purchase a house in Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot and his wife went and, and got a business or a career. They had to be making money. What was you doing? Oh, Lord. What career did they have in Sodom and Gomorrah, dear God? Lord, what was the lady doing to make money in Sodom and Gomorrah? To where when it was time for her to leave, she kept on looking back. 
Y'all, uh-uh. We got to get right today. We got to get right and we got to stay right. Come on now. We got to get right and we have to stay right. So this lady, what was she doing now? Come on now. What was she doing that she kept looking back in Sodom and Gomorrah in the mighty matchless name of Jesus? With that being said, when the time came for this individual to move forward, she kept looking back. And when she looked back, we're talking about Lot's wife. When Lot's wife looked back, when Lot's wife looked back, she turned into a pillar of salt. So the real thing is this. When you turn into a pillar of salt, because you decided to live in a trash dump, you decided to move and, and, and birth kids in a trash dump. Come on, somebody. You decided decided to make a living <clears throat> in a trash dump. You decided to make a career out of a trash dump. You decided to birth kids in a trash dump and educate those trash kids in a trash dump. Now, this is what we're talking about with Lot and his wife. And so when it was time for them to leave, because God was getting ready to judge that trash dump, God was getting ready to birth, put judgment on that trash dump. And here it is, Lot's wife was so connected to those connections to where she turned into a pillar of salt. And so the thing is, by her turning into a pillar of salt, Lot still kept going. Lot and and his kids still kept moving. And so she, his wife, turned into a pillar of salt. God told you to leave Jerry. That's been making a fool out of you in the night. Got you looking like more of an idiot in the daylight than you do in the night. And so because you won't leave him. Because you have opened doors where you're not healed. You're broken and you're not whole. He's feeding off of the molest child molestation. He's feeding off of areas where you are sick, broken, and down. He's feeding off of generational curses. He's feeding off the weak areas of you. He's feeding off the unhealed areas of you. And so because you won't get healed in those areas, because you won't let the bomb of Gilead in, because you won't let the blood of Jesus heal you because you won't call on the fire of God to purify you because you won't stay in your word long enough to let the word root into you because you won't go to church long enough for God to purge and purify you you bringing the demons to church instead of leaving them at the altar because you won't repent because you keep getting a fix from Jerry my God so every time you get ready to break loose Jerry breaking your back down in. Come on now. And then now you're mad at the first lady of the church. You're mad at the minister, the female ministers. You're mad at the preachers. You're mad at these queens because you're being reminded nightly of who Jerry wants you to be. And I said this to say this, and God bless you, sir. God bless you. You good people. You good people. Y'all stay connected with me. And so I said this to say this because a lot of wife kept looking back my god because his wife kept looking back she turned into a pillar of salt and when she turned into a pillar of salt lot kept going and he escaped the judgment of that trash dump and his daughters kept going and they escaped the judgment of that trash dump and I said that to say this. Make sure y'all share, like, tag, and invite. Make sure you share, make sure you share, tag, like, and invite. Amen. And so this is the thing, beloved. This is the thing. And so, praise God for that. That's good. That's good, sis. And so what happened is when that lady kept looking back, when Lot's wife kept looking back, my God, sometimes we are mad because we got stuck there and turned into a pillar of salt. 
God told you to leave Jerry that was disrespecting you. Got you looking like a public fool. Don't respect you privately nor publicly. And because you see somebody else's life who was able to leave, who is able to progress, they still have life. They still have business. They still have authentic ministry. They still are walking in their true identity. They still have a call and an assignment on their life. But because you got stuck there and because you turned into a pillar of salt, now you are bitter and you want other people to turn into a pillar of salt with you. You want us all to be stuck in the house with you and Jerry. You want want us all to be stuck as a pillar of salt. You want us all to be with somebody or connected to friendships or connected to ministries or connected to people or connected to jobs that bring us back to a toxic waste, that bring us back to a trash dump because you never healed your childhood, but yet you're ready to preach. You never healed your childhood, yet you want to compete against other people, other ministries. You never healed healed your childhood, yet you want to write a book. You can't write about something that you ain't never got healed through. You can't write about something and you still get knocked in. You can't write about something and you're not fully delivered. You can't preach a sermon and that you stop trying to act like you living it and you ain't living it because you still broke from child molestation, but yet you ready to write movies. The movies that you are producing are perverted because it's coming from a broken place and the people that you are connected to is steadily daily feeding that broken place but I declare that if you get healed in that area, if you let God into that area God can reconnect you with healthy connections, he can connect you with people that will birth out your real purpose, you don't have to stay in a trash dump you don't have to live there with Jerry, you don't have to stay Stay there with people that got you turning against the female gender. And here it is. You are a pastor and don't respect women. Come on, come on now. Come on, somebody. That's because something is going on there. Here it is. You are a young female and you don't respect older role models. Something got you. And so this is what we have to acknowledge. If something have you. That does not mean that we all have to stay stuck there with you. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Just because Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt because she was disobedient. Because she was broken and refused to let God in. Because Jerry had a stronghold in the inside. Come on now. Because Lucy Lou is Lucy Lou. And got a stronghold on the outside or whatever. So just because you don't want to let that go. You're not going to hold the rest of us hostage to your bondage. You're not going to hold the rest of us hostage to your misery. You're not going to hold the rest of us hostage to your unhealedness. You're not going to hold us hostage to feel rejected because you've been rejected and steadily getting used and abused, stumped on and rejected. You, we don't have to stay there just because Lot had enough sense to let his wife know, honey, you can turn into a pillar of assault. But I still got more life to live. I still have more love to give. I still have more songs to write. I still have more books to produce. And of course, I'm putting myself in the situation. Y'all work with me. And so what he was saying was, you got to let some friends stay a pillar of salt. You got to let some pastors, some bishops, you go ahead and stay there with Lucy Lou. You go ahead 
to stay there with the kids that y'all done burnt out that's half ape and half human. You stay right on there, but I tell you what, as for me and my house, we still going to go forward and serve the Lord. We going to walk in true, de- shut up, Akaya, true divine purpose, true divine will and alignment of God. It don't matter if you're mad. It don't matter if you jealous because you're back in broke. It don't matter because Lucy Luden took all your money. It don't matter what you think. Your opinion don't matter. You know why? Because you don't have authority over your own life. Once you get authority over your life, then you can speak into mine. When you get authority and birth out a true ministry, then you can speak to mine. When you birth and get things in order with your own life, then you have the right to say something about somebody else's. But a lot of y'all don't want to see other people live to their full potential. You know why? Because you need somebody to copy and paste. Which, let me tell you something, honey, because I know GED don't teach this. Special Ed don't teach this. Let me tell you this right here. Flattery is the highest um, copy and paste imitating is the highest form of flattery. Come on, come on, special ed. Let's get in, let's get in. Come on, let's get it, let's get it today. Come on, clap. Clap yourself happy. Clap yourself happy. You got people copying people that they supposed to be hating on. Honey, special ed don't teach this, but this is a special. Let me give you this special. If you copying somebody, they must not be that bad, sis. They must not be doing that bad, girl, if you copying them. Why would you be dumb enough to copy trash? What do that say about you? Why would you be crazy enough to copy somebody you did not believe in? Why would you copy somebody that was not great? Why would you copy somebody that was not on their way to true success? I'm telling you this, and don't y'all tell the college institution on me, but if I did, if I ever did, come on now, if I ever, <laughs> he already know where I'm going. Oh, Lord, I can't I can go ahead and say it anyway. Don't y'all tell the college institution on me, but if I ever did have to copy off somebody's paper, I never copied off nobody that I thought was going to fail, sis. I never copied. I put the quotes up so y'all can't, you know what I'm saying? If I ever did, if I ever did cheat or copy on a quiz, I ain't never copy off nobody, boo, that I thought was dumb. I ain't never copy off nobody, sis, that I thought was trash. Good, that thing killed them. 